Let's bring in Jim, Cran Jim exactly. Grant, editor and founder of Grant's uh, Interest Rate Observer. I, I love, Jim, you know I love you. And I, I like, so you're talking about Robert Kaplan, um, who was talking to Barron's. And I, I guess the reason you highlighted it, it because <laughs> it's like, duh. At this stage, the unintended side effects of the asset purchases are starting to outweigh the benefits. And that's like, stop the presses for you? It's like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Is that why you highlighted that, that piece? You didn't highlight it because it was so profound, did you? Well, uh, he said that, what, two weeks ago. And uh, now he's all for reconsidering and evidently for extending what I would say is a, is a net harmful policy for America. Um, we're talking about the risks of COVID. How about the risks of unlimited uh, QE? I mean, the Fed, uh, the Fed this, uh, is titled this meeting in the virtual meeting in the Grand Tetons, the, uh, I think, macroeconomic policy in an uneven economy. Nice and anodyne. I would title it um, uh, gasoline on a house fire or fire hoses in a hurricane because $120 billion a month in an economy that is bounding and ruddy with good health, stock markets at all time, all times, 4,000 year lows in interest rates and on and on. You wonder why is the Fed still in crisis mode? And we are happy to talk. We Financial markets are happy to talk about such things as COVID and whether or not the chairman will appear personally or virtually. But the biggest thing to me is the persistence of this uh, unexamined premise. The Fed must be on full ahead flank speed at all times. Why do we need this? Why? Why? Yeah, we we love numbers like that. And I was going to bring that up that, you, you know, you're talking about financial conditions per the Goldman Sachs Financial Conditions Index are the easiest uh, since the inception of that gauge in 1984. Then you say stock prices, uh, you point out where those are and you can pick your number where how overvalued those might be. And then you go in the bond market is at the lows of 4000 years. So I'm going to start using that, that uh, yeah, we haven't seen levels like this since uh, uh, minus uh, since 2000 B.C., uh, was the last time it was, uh, but it, but the point you're making is is self-evident, and, and and then you say, and I think people will call you cold and heartless, that the real risk of the Delta variant, uh, what it presents to life and limb, is uh, is small compared to the actual effect of further delay on exiting some of these monetary policies. That the, that effect would actually be worse overall than, than, than uh, just the health effects. And I don't know whether that's true, but uh, in the, I think you're just trying to make a point there. Well, these policies do have consequences and can have profound consequences. And everyone, I mean, the, the bond market and the Fed alike, are betting everything on this idea that uh, these unique policies will not be inflationary and that to the extent that they are inflationary, the inflation will be transitory. All this is seemingly absorbed without uh, dissent. Certainly there's no dissent evident in the bond market. But what if that's not true? What if this inflation, which is no longer a theory, but a fact, what if this is persistent? The entire financial world hangs, dangles by the thread of these ultra low interest rates, all the valuations dependent on them. And closer to Main Street, uh, you know, house prices are raging and affordability is plummeting. And uh, you know, I, I don't mean to compare life and, and literally with the adverse consequences of a unique and perhaps uniquely reckless set of macroeconomic policies. But certainly uh, human health is not unrelated uh, to the state right. of our economies and to the state of our finances. And I say the Fed is playing with fire. Steve. Hmm. Yeah, I'll make two points real quick, Joe. The first is that um, I was convinced by the old uh, Robert Kaplan idea, which is that these $120 billion a month in asset purchases didn't do much for the demand side of the economy, sorry, for the supply side of the economy, which is the part of the economy where the inflation is being generated right now. I still don't see how the Delta variant, where we've shown how that we can have continued and strong demand in uh, amid a raging virus, 
Uh, I don't see how that's going to uh, change the, the demand outlook. So we should still have an inflation problem. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.